Okay, a little bit about user testing. So user testing, the company I work for, we help companies uh, get feedback on their mobile websites, or the, excuse me, their websites or their apps. And we do this with real people who live all around the world. And so they're remote and they work from their homes and they use commodity hardware, just basic microphones and things like that to do this. Now we build this platform with a remote team as well. So uh, fifth, about 15 of our almost 90 employees now uh, are located all around North America, uh, Canada and the United States. And uh, we've learned a lot. <clears throat> so what I wanna do, I wanna share 10 tips, five of which are technology and five of which are more culture. But I really believe that there needs to be a technology uh, foundation, um, very much like what we heard earlier that you have to see and hear. Um, so the first tip that I'd like to give today is, is that how important it is to use dedicated hardware for, with webcams and, and displays and so that you can, people can proactively see what's inside the office without you having to accept a chat or a video chat. And this allows them to do this whenever they want. They can see if you're at your desk or not and they know that you're out to lunch. Um, it also allows you know, for that proverbial uh, tap on the shoulder or the prairie dog over the cubicle uh, that uh, allows them to interrupt you, if you will. Um, that's one of the advantages of co-location, right? Interruption. Uh, but it also allows remotes, if they need to, to be able to do that as well. So here's what it looks like at user testing. So we've we put together a little device, if you will, uh, with a display, information radiator slash remote portal. And we use this um, to communicate at any time people can see what's going on in the office. Um, here's the one that we have in our product room, a uh, little less elaborate, but uh, does the job really, really well. Now, it works because we use wide angle webcams. It's one of the things that is, we've found to really help. Um, and wide angle web webcams help, uh, it helps everybody see from remote the big picture of what's going on. It helps them pick up on the nonverbal communication, where people are sitting, how people are acting, those kinds of things. Um, I would recommend using the a Genius 120, it's on Amazon. Um, if you click on this link, it'll make me rich. Uh, and, well, if you buy it, uh, but it's 45 bucks. It's, it's probably one of the best wide angle webcams that, that we've tried and they work really, really well. Here's what it looks like from the other side. So when you're looking, you see the whole office. This is where I work. Um, almost looks like a bedroom, but uh, basically they could see the whole room, which is really, really helpful. So next tip, microphones are really, really, really important. Hearing is crucial to good communication. We, we established that early on in the, in the talks today. Um, and your internal microphone, you might think it's great because you spent three grand on your Mac. It's not, okay? It's really bad, guarantee it. It picks up taps on the, on the tables, it picks up background noise, all kinds of things. And when you're on a long meeting or a long chat or a long collaboration, that's really distracting and it, it makes you very ineffective. I'd recommend the um, MXL. Uh, it's on Amazon, 70 bucks, you're good to go. I've tested a lot of microphones and this particular microphone works really, really well. I'm surprised it's as cheap as this. I'll probably raise the price after somebody watches this talk. It's a really good mic. So the next tip is invest in good speakers. Good sound puts the remote people on equal footing. I think we've all you know, been in a room where you know, somebody sounds like they're in an echo chamber or there's some crate there in an aluminum can speaking to you, and everyone in the room is kind of wincing, wondering like, what's going on? Where are they? It really reflects poorly on the remote person, and that's not fair, because they're speaking intelligently, they've got ideas to share, and because of poor speakers, they can't get their ideas across, and it's really important to have good speakers. I'd recommend, there's a JBL uh, model, uh, the Duet series. Uh, I think the two key parts to this is get speakers that have volume control that are separate from the software volume control and make sure they have an amplifier of sorts so they can get loud. It's nice when you get the volume up there where if someone remote wants to raise their voice to make a point, everyone feels that, they hear that. And it's, it's a good way to keep that communication active and effective. So the next tip around technology is to, is to use permalinks for virtual conference rooms. Um, 
Let's see. So I, what you do is you, you want to grab, oops, you want to set up a meeting, like if you use Fusebox or GoToMeeting or, or um, Google Hangouts. They have URL structures that allow you to take this long googly garp URL, shorten it with a tool like Bitly, and make sure those meetings never end. Now they have to end at some point usually. It's something like 2040 or something, but usually, most of you that should be good enough. Um, so you want to give them distinct names with Bitly. You can give them a distinct little name, a little something short that you can use to communicate when you reference and chat. Where are you going to chat? Well, we're going to go to ENG1. We're going to go to ENG2 or Prod1 or Prod2 or whatever the, the name of the conference room is. And it's constant every time. And this really helps with mobile devices as well. So um, I wouldn't recommend doing this in your car, but if you happen to be at a red light and you're late for a daily stand-up, you, uh, you can pick up, uh, pull up your, your, your phone on a browser, type a bit.ly in there real quick. It's only a few characters. And all of a sudden, your, your mobile app's launched, and you're able to participate in the meeting with, with whatever app software. It works really, really well. In fact, I put together a couple of tutorials on how to make this happen. The top one also for the Google Hangout, it includes, uh, it includes how to get a Google Hangout to run 24-7 uh, so it never times out, so that remote people can always see in. Oh my goodness, I've got some time here. Uh, I got to go. So now let's talk a little bit about culture, a little bit about culture. Um, so it's really important to balance remote teams with locals. This is really important because people who are local, they'll, if, if, if there's only one remote person, then they'll forget about them. But if you have a balanced team, you're less likely to forget those people and you're less tempted to have conversations that are important um, without those people. Um, and remotes can compare notes and they could advocate change on how process works. Um, so they could be more effective. So also invite remotes into the office, or excuse me, invite remotes uh, to parties and spontaneous conversations. I can't, this is super, super important. Like always make sure your remotes are invited, even if you know that they're not gonna be able to make it to a local party or whatever, make sure that they know that. Send pizzas to them every now and again, or send them lunch or something. Let them know that you care about them. If you're gonna go out to, to lunch as a team, send them a pizza. Um, also, record your offline conversations. There's plenty of tools like this, Evernote, that we could, we could record these conversations and make these happen. Um, so you can share that later. Also, leverage your mobile devices. Um, they're, bring them with you. I, I bring an iPad along to our, our company parties or whatever, and I just have, it's a, one of our virtual conference rooms. People can communicate and everything, and they get the vibe of what's going on in the office. Okay, provide office context. I'm gonna move through this quickly, very quickly. Um, your remote should know what snacks you serve, what coffee you brew, and what your office layout looks like. If they don't, you're not talking with them enough. Uh, leverage your most chatty person. You know who that is. Leverage them, empower them. Empower them to keep these remote people up to date with what's going on. If you can succeed, if they know what coffee you brew, then they're gonna know critical product changes and other communications that are super important. Also, you have to invite people into the office. They have to know that they can always come to home base, in our case, uh, if without that, um, that proactive invitation, making sure that you support them, they can, they, they can, they can feel isolated as a remote, as some of you probably already know. Um, also, let them book their own travel. They know when they're out of sync. They know when a project's coming up that's gonna require a greater bandwidth, maybe in communication. They know when they feel isolated. Let them book their own travel. Also, webcams do not replace in-person relationship building. They cannot. And I've found that the best way, if people are going to fly out to visit with you, spend time with them, clear your schedule, make sure that you spend good time, build up those inside jokes, find something that you can use to leverage, to tease, to have fun with, and uh, you can leverage your offline relationship online. All right, my last tip here is that make sure that everybody gets a chance to be remote. This is key. Local people who aren't remote, they build empathy for those those who are remote, which goes pretty far. Also, uh, people can appreciate the focus and the advantages of being remote as well, which is great. Also, any unfriendly processes or tools, um, they're found and they're fixed immediately. And this is a big deal. Um, in fact, that'll not only help your remote and local relationship, but it's also gonna help everything across the board. Good luck.